dude, I do not do the pop and bottle shit. And anybody that's ever hung out with me, they'll tell you, I don't do that, man. Like, if I go to a nightclub, all I want to do is sit at the bar, have a couple drinks, listen to some music, blend in. I don't need shout outs, I don't need special treatment, I don't need none of that shit. Only problem is, if I sit at the bar, it takes one person to get on a cell phone and be like, oh shit, I think Gary Owen's struggling. <laughs> this motherfucker at the bar with everybody else. He came to afford his own section. Yes, I can, I don't want a section. I don't want to spend thousand dollars popping bottles. First of all, I don't drink that much. Two drinks, I'm good. Three, I'm fucked up. I ain't gonna spend thousand dollars popping bottles. Why? So me and my boys can drink? We ain't fucking. Get your own look, you thirsty motherfucker. Shit. <laughs> Looking at me all night. Hey, Gary, you gonna get a bottle? I'm gonna get a glass. Plus, plus, if I did want to order a bottle, I can't do it discreetly. I can't be in like, hey man, let me get one bottle, and they slide me a bottle on the low. Nah, comes with a goddamn sparkler on it. The light show happens throughout the club. A siren goes off. Mm-hmm. It takes eight girls to bring one fucking bottle out. Like one girl's got the bottle, one's got the sparkler. Five girls got these big ass letters to spell somebody's name out. Where the fuck did the letters come from at the club? They used to be coming out the back, you know, David. <laughs> and I tell you what, you've never been to a nightclub and seen a dude order one bottle and then call it a night. Nah, but then I do got five, six bottles on his tab. And everybody thinks it's the bottle girls that make dudes want to order more bottles. No, no, it's not. It's the DJ. DJ's a mastermind behind it all. Because as soon as the DJ sees that first bottle come out with that sparkling on it, DJ gets on a microphone, starts hyping that dude up, basically mind-fucking him, making him feel like he's a man that night, makes him want to pop more bottles, you know? Because as soon as that first bottle comes out, here comes the DJ. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! I see you, table six! I see you, table six! One bottle, two bottle, three bottle, four bottle! Somebody getting it in tonight! Girls coming out the back, David. <laughs> Every time I see a dude with me popping bottles, I'll be sitting at the bar, my one drink, watching it all play out. <laughs> So while the DJ's hyping David up, I'll be over at the bar doing the math. I'll be like, oh shit. <laughs> David got the big bottles of Hennessy. That's just $750 a bottle. So the DJ's going, one bottle, two bottle. I'm over going 750, 1500, 2250, 3000, 3750. David gonna be mad in the morning. <laughs> I mean, I be trying to tell dudes, man, you ain't got to pop bottles and meet girls like that. Because I think nine times out of ten, guys go to nightclubs just to meet girls. I get it, you know. But if you ain't got $1,000 of pop on bottles, you ain't got to do it, man. I be telling dudes, man, if you want to meet girls, you ain't got the money like that, just listen. Just wait outside. Wait for the club to close. Everybody got to leave, you know. You know, hopefully a food truck pulls up. It's so easy to meet girls at the food truck when the club closes. Because usually, the girls leaving a nightclub, when they wait to close, those girls are a little tipsy, discombobulated, got their shoes in their right hand, you know? (laughs) They in the parking lot looking for the girls they came with, just walking around. Karen? (laughs) Karen? (laughs) Who the fuck is Karen? (laughs) I be telling you, man, just wait for the food truck to pull up. Hopefully it's a taco truck. Everybody likes tacos late at night, you know? So, so when it's your turn, just wait in line. When it's your turn to order some tacos, look behind you, find a nice looking lady, offer some food. Just sit there. What's up? Wait, 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 you want, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want some tacos? You want some tacos? I'll take a taco. <laughs> All right, get two tacos. Hey man, let me get two tacos, $2. Here you go, have a couple tacos. Girl, 
girlfriends come over, where'd you get them tacos at? That dude right there, he nice. <laughs> you want some guacamole on it? Let me get a side of guacamole, 50 cents. Here you go, put some guacamole on your tacos. <laughs> you spent $2.50. You got the same phone number David got. David spent $6,000 popping bottles in a nightclub. You know? <laughs> And trust me, she gonna remember you over David, you know? You know, the next day, you, could, you know, got really, you put food in her body, you nourished her, you know? The next day, think about it, David ain't gonna, ain't gonna wake up till one, two o'clock, all the Hennessy run through his system. All you gotta do is get up 9, 30, 10 in the morning, shoot a little good morning text, good morning, beautiful, good meeting you last night, taco, taco, taco emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that's a taco dude, yeah. Yeah, I like David's cool, that's a taco dude, yeah. What's crazy about R. Kelly is, I watched that, I watched that documentary, Surviving R. Kelly, it was six episodes, and uh, it's crazy how his whole career is like before the piss and after the piss. That was like the whole timeline, you know? Like, I, I, and I didn't tape Surviving R. Kelly, I watched all six episodes live. Like, like, by episode four, I was the guy on Twitter. Fuck R. Kelly, I ain't listen to his shit no more. He's deleted forever. <laughs> Three days later, I'm at a party. Step, step, side to side, bring it back. I went, oh shit! I ain't supposed to be dancing this no more. But I couldn't stop dancing. I go, oh my God, he is the Pied Piper. His music has taken over my legs. I swear, after, uh, after watching Surviving R. Kelly and all these other scandals that happen every week, I'm, I'm to the point in my career well, I'm just happy to be an entertainer without a scandal right now, you know? I mean, it's, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I'm scared to open up my laptop in the morning. Cause I just be looking at it like, oh shit, it's today today. Cause I've never done anything to anybody, I'm not worried about that. Still don't mean somebody can't accuse me of shit, you know? Like it'd be nothing for a woman to come out of left field and be like, Gary Owen smacked my ass in 1992. He was at a crisscross concert. <laughs> Your clothes were on backwards. <laughs> so proud. <laughs> I, keep, I keep waiting for a white lady to come after me. I keep waiting for a white lady to be like, Gary Owen sexually harassed me. Now you know you lied. <laughs> <laughs> Even my wife would be like, she bullshit. <laughs> he ain't do that. Just how some white people just don't realize what you can and cannot say about black people. Like, like I'm around black people a lot, like a lot, you know? Like, <laughs> honestly, it's pretty easy what you can and cannot say, you know? Like, you can't say what Roseanne said on Twitter. I'm not gonna repeat it, you can't say that, you know? You can't say the M word, that's obvious, you know? Just some white people won't let that word go. They just won't let it go, you know? Why can't we say it? It's just a word. Can we say it? They be looking at me like I know the answer and shit. Gary, why can't we say it? I don't know, that's the rules. I got bigger shit to worry about than that one goddamn word. Hell, I watch that spelling bee on ESPN every year. There's a lot of goddamn words out there we ain't using. Use one of them motherfuckers once in a while. There's so many words just sitting in Dick's there right now, unused. Cause I, I'm the only white person in my house. I hear the N-word every day, room to room. Just ding, 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 ding. I still can't say it. And I'm paying the goddamn mortgage. That's just the rule. Yo, that'd be crazy if black people change the rules one day. <laughs> Just black people come out, all right. We don't give a shit, you can say it now. You'd have white guys walking around, hear the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Black people said we're allowed to say the N-word, we're clear, we're good, we're allowed to say it. Are you fucking shitting me right now? <laughs> nah, we're approved, we're allowed, we can say it. We'll say it. Fuck <laughs> that, you say it first. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie though, sometimes when me and my wife are having sex, she calls me the N-word. It makes me feel good, it does, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck you say? I 
be in the bathroom after words flexing up. What the fuck? <laughs> be calling all my friends up. You ain't gonna believe what the fuck my wife called me. What's she call you? Can't tell you. But she said it. Who else is messing up as a comedian? Monique. Oh, Monique keeps messing up, man. And I like Monique a lot, man, but goddamn, Mo, she's going after everybody, you know? And she went after Steve. Steve Harvey tried to help her out, you know, on his show, and then and the next day, she's throwing Steve Harvey under the bus. I knew Monique went too far when she started going after Oprah. I was like, ooh, some shit you got to keep to yourself, man. You can't go after Oprah. Oprah starts making phone calls. You ain't working no more, bottom line, you know? Because th here's the thing about the entertainment business, man. When, when you ain't in movies like you think or TV shows like you think, your brain starts playing tricks on you. You start thinking there's a conspiracy against me. You know, people don't like me anymore. When it's really not the case, because you never know when your name's coming up behind closed doors for a movie or a TV show. Like, so when Monique went after Oprah, I said, God, Mo, don't do that. Because, you know, Oprah's got her own TV network, produced some four or five movies a year. Monique didn't know what Oprah had coming up. Oprah might be getting ready to do the color purple, too. Sealy had a baby. <laughs> She was gonna bring in Monique for Sealy had a baby. <laughs> but I was just, I was just looking at like, I was looking at all the people Monique started going after. So it was, so it's, so it's Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, Steve Harvey, Oprah Winfrey. You know, uh, then she went, she knows she went after my, my buddy, Will Packer. The same guy that put me in Ride Along Think Like a Man is the exact same guy that put Monique in that Christmas movie a few years ago. And Monique tried to compare Will Packer movie producer to Harvey Weinstein movie producer. And I thought that was a little too far. So I went on my Instagram page and I did a video directed towards Monique, right? Now I never called Monique at her name, nothing like that. I just said, listen, Mo, when you got a lot of different problems with a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons, it might be you, you know? <laughs> And I'm not stupid. I knew when I did the video, I knew I was going to get some backlash, right? What I didn't know, I didn't know there was this thing out there called Black Twitter. I didn't know what the fuck Black Twitter was, right? All of a sudden, I do this video towards Monique, and man, Black Twitter's real. And they was in my ass for three days straight. If you don't know what Black Twitter is, if you say anything on social media that Black Twitter deems disrespectful to Black people or a Black person, they come after you. And I don't know how many people are on Black Twitter. I don't know if they have an office building with cubicles <laughs> or it's a group text that goes out. I don't know. All I know is I did this video towards Monique, and for the next three days, every time I got on Twitter, it was over 100 mentions of my name, and it was just Black Twitter down the line coming after me. And everybody was kind of saying the same thing, just in their own way. You know, stay in your lane. This don't concern you. Leave black shit to black people. <laughs> Somebody went, newsflash, dot, 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 you ain't black. <laughs> I was like, damn! <laughs> Woo! Motherfucker dropping knowledge today. <laughs> shit, the dot, dot, dot fucked me up a little bit. <laughs> I go, damn, did I just get a dramatic pause? But listen, <laughs> listen, I, I, give, I give respect to respect is due, man. Some, some people on black Twitter hit me with some good ass put downs. I mean, there was some good ones. I was looking at my phone like, ooh, that motherfucker got me on that one. That's a good one right there. I was <laughs> showing my friends, look at that motherfucker call me. I think, I think my favorite put down from black Twitter was somebody said, stay in your lane, white cracker bread. I was like, God damn. That is the whitest shit I've ever been called in my life, white cracker bread. Holy fuck, that's white. <laughs> How do you combine two separate white put-downs and make it one white crack of bread? <laughs> that's so white. I didn't even get mad when I saw it. I just got thirsty. <laughs> Holy shit, that's a dry-ass put-down. At least put some milk on that shit. White crack of bread. That's so white. Shit, every time I go to Starbucks, they make them write that shit on my cup, you know? <laughs> How you doing? Can I get a latte? What's the name? White Cracker Bread. <laughs> and I make them say it like they mean it. I got a latte for White Cracker Bread? Mm-mm. Say it like I said it. 
and white cracker bread. Appreciate that, thank you. Have a good day. Shit, I didn't know what stay in your lane meant. I didn't know what that meant. I had to call one of my friends. I said, hey man, somebody on black Twitter told me stay in my lane. What exactly does that mean? I guess there's a white lane and a black lane on Twitter. And you're not supposed to cross the lanes. That's stupid. Like if somebody gonna tell me stay in my lane, I'd be thinking, have you been to my house? I'm like the only white person in my house, by the way. Like, like my wife's there, she's black. Her mom lives with us, she's black. We got our kids, they're mixed. Then my oldest son, any of mine. It's my stepson. He's full black. <laughs> and I sent him to college all four years. I paid for everything, room, tuition, board, all that shit. So basically, I sent a black kid to college that wasn't mine, <laughs> and you gonna tell me stay in my lane. <laughs> like, <laughs> motherfucker, I'm in my lane, shit. How many black kids you send to college, black Twitter? You can suck my white cracker bread dick. It's a full loaf, ho. Call it wonder. White cracker bread. That's the thing, too. I be watching a lot of, like, uh, I be watching a lot of shit on my phone and iPad. Let me ask you this. Why is it every day I get on my phone or my iPad, and it seems like at some point during the day, I'm going to see somebody getting their ass kicked? Every day. Like, I be wondering, how do people got their phones out at the exact time people be getting knocked out? You know, because I, I honestly, I never see people get knocked out in real life, and I'm happy about that. I must be hanging out in the right areas. I'm good with that, you know? Because, you know, every time I see somebody get knocked out on the internet, first thing that goes to my brain is, uh, hope that dude ain't got no kids. Especially when it's a dude, like, I hope that dude ain't got no kids, man. I mean, honestly, can you imagine being a dad and you get knocked out and somebody films it and that shit goes viral? Your kids ain't listen to you no more. What the hell are you gonna tell your son? Hey, be home at nine o'clock. Oh, you awake now, Dad? <laughs> but I tell you, watching all these people get knocked out on the internet, it opened my eyes to shit. It opened my eyes to how easy it is to get knocked out. And it's helped me, man. Like, I don't get, I don't get in fights at all. I don't get in arguments. I will walk, run, skip, hide, duck. There's nothing you can say to me make me want to fight you. Nothing, you know? Even when I go with my guys, man, I got, you know, I got my guys that open up for me and then my road manager, Brad. Every time we go out, you know, before we hit a club or something, they'll be asking me, hey, Gary, man, ship pops off now. You got our back? I was like, I don't. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Better find the exit, run. I'm out, man. Shit, walk away. Walk away. I, it's, and every time I like go to the city, man, I always be getting messages with people like, hey, man, you need a bodyguard when you in town? Need security? And every time I go to these people's pages, it's always big, swole, muscle-bound motherfuckers trying to be my bodyguards, you know? And, and let me tell you something. If I ever get to the point where I feel like I need a bodyguard just to go out and hang out, I ain't hiring some big swole motherfucker, no. You wanna be my bodyguard? I'm asking you one question. How fast are you? You gotta be faster than me, cause the shit pops off. You gotta be at the car before I am, you know? I can't be over here waiting on your swole ass. Come on, man, they shoot! Come on, man, they shoot! All right, Gary, here it comes! Honestly, all, all the years I've been doing stand-up, over 20 years, right, there's only been one time in my entire comedy career where I felt like I was going to get my ass kicked after a show. I almost did. I, I'll never forget it. It was just a couple years ago. I was in Detroit, Michigan. It was after my show. We had a little after party. And I don't know what this dude thought I said to him, and I didn't say nothing to him, but he had me hemmed up against the wall, and I had nowhere to go. And I was like, fuck, how am I going to get out of this shit, right? But this is how I got out of the fight. All I did was I put my hands up, I stopped making eye contact with a dude, and I just started agreeing with him. Whatever he said, I just went with it, you know? He's like, hey, man, I'm about to beat your ass. I was like, yeah, you probably will. <laughs> hey, man, you acting like you scared right now. Ain't nobody acting. <laughs> man, what the fuck is you looking at? Not you, bro. But I, I got out of it, right? So the fight didn't happen. But I, I backed down. I did. I'll be the first man to back down. So the next morning, I'm in my hotel room, right? It's about 9 a.m. My road manager, Brad, comes to my room. He's like, Gary, what happened last night? I was like, no, man, that dude tried to start a fight me. I told you, I ain't fighting nobody. He goes, um, Gary, can I be honest with you right now? I said, yeah, what's up? He goes, you, uh, 
you kind of looked like a pussy last night. I said, what do you mean I look like a pussy? He goes, I'm just saying, man, you back down in front of everybody. You kind of look like a pussy. I said, well, who exactly did I look like a pussy to? He goes, everybody that was in that club. I go, well, who's in the club? He goes, I don't know. I go, exactly. I don't give a fuck about some strange motherfuckers. I'm leaving in three hours, shit. Now, now my flight left Detroit at noon. At 4 p.m., I was safe and sound back in my own house. I was no longer state of Michigan. I was no longer city of Detroit. That's when I got on my Instagram page. I was like, oh shit, somebody almost got these hands last night. <laughs> They're lucky I was feeling generous and shit. Hashtag doing what I do. <laughs> you know? It's funny too, looking back, looking back at my life, I was thinking like, like I, I joined the Navy like right after high school. And I was, I was thinking, why did I join the Navy? And I, I, remember, I remember all the reasons because, you know, I was a, listen, I was, I was a broke kid living in a trailer park in Southern Ohio. The military is looking at me like, we can get that motherfucker right there, you know? Because <laughs> it was like my senior high school, there was about a week run where every day I came from school, there's a different recruiter at my trailer trying to get me to sign up, you know? And it just kept showing up, you know? Because I remember the Marine guy showed up first, the Marine recruiter, and I remember he got out of his car in front of my trailer, and I thought Marines had the best uniforms. When I saw him in that uniform, I said, damn, that motherfucker looks sweet. <laughs> I told my mom, I'm gonna join the Marines. Then he walked in my trailer. He was like, Gary, we are the few, the proud. I go, what's that mean? He goes, when shit pops off, we the first ones in, we the few. I was like, ooh, I'd rather be part of the many. I'm good on that shit. <laughs> The hell you trying to be first for? Shit, pace yourself, slow down. Nobody trying to be first in the fight. You don't know what's popping off. You the first one to fight, shit. Who's second or third? I'll join the third. I ain't trying to join the first. Who's third? I'll join third. I ain't trying to join first. I'll join third. Cause I, I will, listen, I'll give it to Marines. They are better Americans than me. Cause you're hearing stories about the Marines. You know, they'd be in Iraq, be in the desert. You know, be, <laughs> You'd be in a store like, like, you'd be just like, 33 Marines would be in Iraq, be in a desert, staying around, and then a grenade will drop in the middle of them, and one Marine will jump in a grenade, take the blow to save the other 32 Marines' lives. I'm like, man, if we're in a desert, and there's 33 of us, and a grenade drops in the middle, and I see it first, either 33 people die, or 32 people die. But if one's gonna make it, it's gonna be me, motherfuckers. <laughs> like, oh, shit, grenade! <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Shit, the army guy came to my trailer. He was lying the whole time, lying his ass off. <laughs> army, army recruiter walked in my trailer with a straight face and was like, Gary, I heard you wrestle. I heard you're in your high school wrestling team. I said, yeah, I wrestle. He said, you know, if you join the Army, you could try out for the Army wrestling team, and if you make it, you just wrestle the whole time you're in the Army. <laughs> I said, sir, I am 3 and 30 right now. I've won three times and lost 30. I am literally the worst wrestler in the state of Ohio as we speak. I didn't wrestle to wrestle. It was either come to the trailer park after school, or I could hang out with wrestlers and wrestle every now and then. I go, fuck it, I'll just wrestle. I ain't give a fuck if I want a loss. I used to pin myself half the time. You know, because every time I get ready to wrestle somebody, I run on on the mat, I look across, they be resetting the time clock. I go, you ain't gonna need that. This ain't gonna take that long, you ain't gonna need that clock. <laughs> I've been looking at a guy, I'm about to wrestle him over here, sweating, warming up, smacking his leg, got his headphones on. I go, you're doing too much, man. This ain't that kind of match. <laughs> <laughs> this dude listening to NWA, getting all fired up. This is more of a Kenny G type wrestling match. This is smooth jazz. We're gonna do this shit together. And when I tell you my senior in high school, I won three times and lost 30, I didn't beat three different people. I beat the same motherfucker three times, one dude. <laughs> he was trying to lose too. Cause the first time I saw him wrestle, I go, oh, this motherfucker trying to lose. My coach was like, how can you tell? Cause I try to lose, coach. I can tell when the motherfucker trying to lose. <laughs> I met the first time I had wrestled, we was both trying to lose. At one point, we land on the mat right next to each other, both trying to pin ourselves. <laughs> oh shit, you trying to lose too. Shit, honestly, the Navy recruiter, he was just the most honest. 
He didn't promise me nothing but a flight out. That's all he promised me. Because the neighbor recruiter walked in my trailer and looked around and went, I can get you out of this shit. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I just put down my trailer, mother. <laughs> and then he didn't tell me what I was going to do in the Navy or nothing. I said, what would my job be? I said, what, what would my job be? He goes, what's the matter? Look where you at right now, kid. <laughs> All right, I'll go with you. Shit. <laughs> Shit, I remember my first year in the Navy, I made $24,000 for the year. I called my mom. I said, you ain't got to work no more. <laughs> You're done, Ma. I got you. 24K, baby. I told you I was going to do so with my life, man. I remember my, my first check in the Navy was $512. I'll never forget it, man. You lucky to on Instagram back then. I don't know. Look now, haters. Get on my level. I got another one coming in 13 days. Can't stop, won't stop. 512 every two weeks. <laughs> it used to be like athletes and rappers had all the scandals. Now it's like comedians, we lead the charge. You know, you got, you got Bill Cosby, he's in jail, you know? It seems like every year Kevin Hart's got to go through something. Like, like, like this last year was the Oscars. Like, I, I didn't like how the Oscars did Kevin. Like, how you gonna ask that man to host the Oscars, and then the very next day asked him to apologize for some tweets he sent out over 10 years ago that you should have known about before he asked him to host the show anyways. And plus, he would just bullshit with his boys. There was nothing malicious behind his tweets. But all of a sudden, he did some gay tweets, and now these people were like, Kevin Hart's a homophobe. He's a homophobe. Let me tell you something, that dude is definitely not a homophobe. I know the guy 20 years, done three movies with him. One movie is called Ride Along. In that movie, I had number underwear and honey on my chest. That was my whole wardrobe, you know? And Kevin, and Kevin you know, Kevin had to lay on my chest, you know? So when you see that movie, that scene's only like two, three minutes long, but when we shot it, it took like 30, 35 minutes to get that scene right. And to Kevin's credit, he never left my chest. He stayed there all 35 minutes, you know? <laughs> what kind of homophobe's gonna lay in a man's chest for 35 minutes straight? Get the fuck out of here. True professional, committed to the craft, you know? <laughs> But I, I do remember we were shooting right along, right? Like every time before the director would say action, I had Kevin a headlock and his head be right here. I just started whispering to him, just, just messing with his head right before we shoot the scene. I used to be sitting there like, I dreamed of this. <laughs> Can you believe we're here right now? <laughs> Look at God, won't he do it? <laughs> Can't be so mad. Gary, shut the fuck up. Get on me, shut up. <laughs> Dang, Kev, you strong. Like a little ninja turtle. <laughs> but it's crazy, like, like when Kevin had to go through all that shit with the Oscars, it reminded me of shooting right along with him. But it also reminded me how I got the part in right along. Like, out of all the films I've done, that was the most random movie I ever got. Because literally, I was at my house watching a football game on TV, and I get this text from this producer, Will Packer. He's like, gee, I'm getting ready to do a movie, Kevin Ice Cube. I'm going to bring you in for an audition. Send me a picture with your clothes off. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I'm thinking, Will's kid, and he's bullshit. It's a joke. So I text Will back, naked, or can I keep my shorts on? Will text back, up to you, with the wink emoji. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I called Kev on the phone. I said, Kev, are you getting ready to do Mood Cube? He goes, yeah, we start shooting this week in Atlanta. I said, oh, so this is legit. <laughs> so I'm trying to get the part. So I drop my shit. I send a naked pic here, right? Now, now, I ain't take the pick immediately. I mean, I prep my shit a little bit, you know? I mean, I got a little blood, got a little arch in it, you know? I mean, it wasn't here, but about 60, 65%, you know? Just in case my shit gets released, right? Because I remember I prepped my shit, <laughs> dropped my stuff, and I took like a, a Captain Morgan's pose. I was like... <laughs> I send the pick to Will. I can see on my phone that he opened the pick, but he don't send nothing back. So now I'm like, ah, oh, shit, did I go too far, right? <laughs> so, so two days go by, I still ain't heard from Will. So now I'm thinking, did I get catfished? So now I'm on the internet, checking all these websites, making sure my shit ain't out there, you know? I'm worried, but I ain't super worried because I prepped my shit, you know? So, because if my shit got released, I was going to be like, that's just regular. Yeah, that's, just, that's just me walking around. That's just every day, nigga. I don't know who took that pic. 
So then five days later, Will finally calls you back. He goes, gee, I got good news, baby. You got the part. I said, got the part in what? He goes, ride along. I said, oh. Oh, I thought you wanted me to come audition for that movie. He goes, Gary, I sent that exact same text to five other actors. You're the only one that sent in a butt naked pic. I had to give you the part. You gotta want it, baby balls, out! 